This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. and welcome to Dubai, one of the best known cities in the Middle East and part of the United Arab Emirates. For centuries a harbour town known for trading goods at the various souks. Today the markets are bright modern malls and the traders are tourists shopping and visiting the Burj Khalifa and the Burj Al Arab which sit easily beside river rides on a dhow as well as the museums that honour the traditions of old. The racing culture goes back a very long way here and camel racing is still happening but it's for a different sort of competition that we've flown to the Emirates. We are in Dubai at the Dubai Autodrome already for the 13th time this, that we organize this, the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai. This is the second biggest motorsport event in the UAE. This is something that we are proud of. 24 Hour has been a long lasting event. It has the uh, competitiveness, uh, it has also uh, the entertainment in it, and the sociable activities. Drivers come from all over the world. Many are professionals, but most are so-called gentlemen drivers. That doesn't make the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai an easy race to win. I think if you can race in Dubai, you can race anywhere. So everybody that comes here, they are like an A1 driver in my books. Everyone's so great out there and the atmosphere is lovely and the weather's pretty good for January. For 2018, Kravendik, the organisers, have decided to make this race, as well as the whole season, even more attractive to those entering touring cars. We always have different classes, but what is new this year is that we have two series combined in one race. We have the GT series, that's one, and the second one is the TCE series. So also we have two pole positions. We are very happy to have the 92 uh, entrant um, as a driver and as in charge of motorsport. I always think of a driver and that means you have to have also a, a, a circuit that you can maneuver and this is a place that actually brings over 40 nationalities. I welcome them and I hope they will have a safe but competitive event. For 2018 the event is a 10 day festival of motorsport having already had the Hankook 3x3 three three hours of Dubai, no GT and touring cars there, just the Kravendik prototype series. Yeah it's been amazing, we did uh, the prototype race last weekend uh, had a few days off and uh, back again now for the 24 hour. However, for our race, not all cars would even reach the qualifying. In free practice yesterday, I was in the end of the start and finish line. There comes another car from the pit lane. I tried to overtake him on the left side. Uh, the other car pushed to left and hit me on, on my right side. And also I hit the wall and that's all. The RS3 TCR couldn't be safely repaired in the time that the team had. So unfortunately they had to withdraw the car. They did however find somewhere to race for most of the drivers of the retired number 127. Two from my colleagues of this car uh, are changed to the other car. And now they drive uh, on this car with five people. And I uh, will be a spectator. <laughs> I'm talking about spectators. The event is attracting attention even before the race has started. Yeah, this is Dubai. This is what makes Dubai so special. The crowd, you can see it behind me, people all over the place. And that makes it Dubai. We have so many people here at the start grid. Not only the drivers, not only team members. We have spectators, partners, sponsors, friends, family. People that are in the neighborhood, interesting in the sports. We got a lot of people. You can see it, the crowd is amazing. The people love to come and get close to the cars. Um, this is one of the few races that gives you that opportunity. 
motorsports is really popular in the UAE. This is the second biggest race after the Grand Prix, honestly. And people love it. They, are, they love coming and, and seeing the cars, touching the cars, and, uh, you know, uh, talking to the drivers and interacting with them uh, casually. Qualifying was held on Thursday afternoon with two sessions, one for the GT Endurance Series and one for the Touring Car Endurance Series. That wasn't too bad. I mean, I was I got to the grips to the car re reasonably fast, and um, you know it was just getting used to everything when it came to the car. And uh, the track evolved quite a bit over the week, and uh, we managed to put it on on the front row for the for the race. In the TCE series, four separate classes, which gives us four pole sitters. Vincent Rademacher claiming pole in the TCR class. Pole position is always good, but yeah, everybody knows for 24 hours it's not the, the main target, the pole position, but the car is working very well. And um, I didn't take any risk for, for uh, put the car on the pole position, it's just the car is fast and uh, I'm, I'm, I know this track very well, of course. It's my night time here, so, um, and I like it, it's a very technical track. Fastest overall, the number 229 Janetta, who's on pole in the SP3 category. Uh, qualifying was good. Uh, this is the first time for me out this circuit um, and first time in a Janetta for me as well. So um, probably wasn't expecting to go quite as fast as we did. To do a 207 in the end to get pole was, was a surprise, but um, obviously delighted. Um, and it was a big thanks to the team, my friend Nathan and my co-drivers Mark and Dominic. Um, I think we've got a nice chance for the race, so we'll see how it goes. So what can we expect from the race? Well, expectations is of course to uh, finish the race, but you know we like to be on the podium, and I think we have the drivers. We have one young driver, McKay Snow. He's from America. He's uh, only 17, and he's uh, really doing well. And uh, with the other drivers, we're all like 55, 60. So he's in uh, in an old club, but I think we have a nice club together. Well, we know that we're quicker than a lot of the GT cars, so we'll gradually pick our way through them. Um, it's a long race, 24 hours, and uh, we're going to do nothing heroic, hopefully not. Uh, it's hot, but uh, we will see. We are the smallest cl class in, uh, in, uh, in this race, so uh, we will drive. This is a combined race with GTs. They're faster, so at the front of the field, the TCE cars lined up behind. This makes it an interesting start for the touring car pole sitter, who's in the middle of the pack. Some of the GT4 cars in front of me will possibly be slower than I am at the front of the TCE grid. So there's potentially going to be some traffic to work through in the first few laps. Um, and obviously that's going to slow our pace down, which in theory is a good thing because the slower our pace is, the more fuel we get at the pit stops. So there's a lot of tactics and stuff to try and work out and it's going to be interesting to see what pace we can get down to at the start of the race and how many cars we can pick off as well. The UAE Minister of Sport is a former driver and very happy to see how racing has evolved here in the last 15 years. Racing is something that to me was always different. You see, in this part of the world, up to 2004, we never had a circuit. We had always rallying. Now, before motorsport was rallying, now rallying is part of motorsport. The pace car is off the track. 90 cars from the GT Series and the TCE Series are heading towards the main straight for the start of the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai. The lights are off and at the front of the field the GT cars are battling for their positions, but behind them the TCE Series entries are just starting their race as well. John Barnes and the 229 Ginetta started this race from Paul in the TCE Series and he is first to the first corner. The two CWS entries are right behind him and they're not in the mood to steer there. James May goes by the Century 229 Janetta and now has to battle with the slower GT cars ahead of him. Uh, yeah, in my mind, I think we should have been ahead of the cars that we were quicker than yesterday. So there's a pack of GT4 cars that we were put behind. Um, it was good fun because we had to overtake all of them, but within four laps, you're overtaking probably 20 cars or so. But it's really good fun. And in the midst of the traffic, James May takes the lead. This is the second biggest motorsport event in the United Arab Emirates and has a packed field. Now it's the first time I tried to, to start here in Dubai and it's, uh, it's crazy because we have a, maybe a bit slower car compared to all the GT3 cars and faster cars. So uh, after the first five, six laps, the fast cars are coming and it's, uh, it's a bit crazy, but fun.
An incident requires a short code 60. Teams dive to the pit lane. They can use this opportunity to change tyres and get fuel without losing time on track. But the overall lead has gone to Stan Cortana in the 2-1-2. This is not in their plans at the moment. I was leading there at one point, but I didn't really care. I was just happy just to set into a rhythm and uh, just start doing consistent lap times. Um, just tried to stay out of trouble for the first half of the race. It seemed to be a lot of people were getting a bit you know, carried away with themselves, but I just kind of stayed back and tried to be very consistent and um, made up a few spots, which was really good. So, to see what happens. In the Creventic 24-hour series, the golden rule is the slow car stay on the racing line. Those who are quicker need to find their way past, possibly off the ideal line. There are two series here running a total of 11 classes, everyone running their own race and entitled to their part of the racetrack, regardless of which category they're in or whether they're professionals or amateurs. However, it's always smart to try and get out of the way when you see a battle approaching in your rear view mirror, as you don't want to get caught up with the faster entries. It's good, you've got to watch your mirrors. Um, the TCE cars, the, the touring cars, the Saints and stuff are still really quick in a straight line. And the GT3s have been quite well behaved so far as well. Racing etiquette demonstrated when Wolfgang Triller in the 187 Porsche realised that Amir Khan in the 99 Honda is holding the racing line he waits a couple of corners before overtaking. Wolfgang avoids any chance of a collision at the cost of just a few seconds. The 278 in for a pit stop. The pit crew quickly changed the tyres. Speed, however, was to be limited by the drivers. Uh, the hardest thing was actually staying under a lap time. We've got a limit of well, what was 212. And trying to do under a 212 every lap was the biggest challenge. So there was a lot of short shifting, a lot of lifting around the circuit. And that was probably the hardest thing, is to say concentrate to do that. If you keep to your minimum lap time, you're allowed 80 litres of fuel at each stop. But if you go quicker, that changes the equation. Went too quick. As simple as that. We had three laps that have gone too quick and that's it. We moved down to 70 litres now. The team won't get those litres back, but think that it won't hinder them too much. I have to change tyres and driver stints and things anyway. Um, so I think we'll still be OK. It means it'll be quite fun at the night, so we can push really hard um, and just see where we are in the morning, really. Three hours down, let's have a look at the intermediate standings in the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai. CWS team manager Colin White must be happy right now. Both of his cars, 25 seconds apart at the top of the standings. 178 leading, 278 seconds. The Moderna TCR216 on the same lap and third overall. It's strong competition in the TCR class. Moderna leads by a lap. Second, the Liquid Molly 130 Volkswagen. Third in class, Stanko and Tanner with the 112. Top three in Cup 1 class, all a lap apart. With Zorg Rensport and the 151 car leading, the sister 152 car is second, the bonk powered Hoffer number 131 is currently third. This is endurance. And for me, one of the highlights of the week is the team spirit that we have. Um, everybody's a true professional. Um, and when you walk up and down the pit lane, you can see other teams have got good team spirit and. Um, the things that can happen in the race are always sometimes difficult to accept, but th this is endurance. In 2006, at the first running of the Creventic 24 Hours of Dubai, the motorsport landscape in the UAE was very different to now. With no history of motorsport in the region, there was simply no local knowledge on how to put together an event like this. However, that's all changed as experience gains on events like the 24 hours have allowed the local officials, organisers and marshals to attain the highest international standards. And it shows. We've been doing it for 13 years. So uh, we finally succeeded in, in, in creating the, 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 the whole society or the whole community behind motorsports. And that is all the way from drivers, mechanics to marshals. Marshals play a key role in this. And with, with, the, with the help of the ATC UAE, the local ASN, we've managed to train a lot of local uh, marshals who are all enthusiasts and they do this because they love it. That's why, that's why you see the big improvement. As a result, the ATC has collected several awards. Yeah, motorsport, you cannot deny it anymore. 
I, if I talk in Dubai, I talk in the UAE, or I talk in the, uh, um, in the area. I mean, uh, we just even won uh, the, um, the best marshal of the year for Formula One in, in UAE. So to us, it is a culture. We are proud of the, um, of the prizes, but the prizes does not make us sit. It makes us want to deliver more and to achieve more. Achievement comes in the members of the drivers, competitors, and also the staff and the volunteers with us. And on the Dubai Autodrome, this race has many hours still to go. In the Touring Car Endurance Series, the 178 Jeanette still leads. The number 911 Porsche has the overall and GT lead. The Cup 1 class are not the fastest cars on the circuit, so Bruno De Rossi in the duo racing number 235 BMW has to use his rear view mirror as he climbs up the category. The TCR class is led by the number 216 from Modena, and they're up to second position in the overall standings. But the driver is reporting a problem. Uh, well, we just uh, got a report that he had some contact. He was uh, being passed by a car. Uh, I think the car went wide and ran into our car. Uh, so we don't know exactly what happened. Um, we've seen the car on TV a few times. It looks like one of the driving lights is out. Uh, the bumper is uh, crushed and uh, one of the fins, the fender fins, is hanging loose. Uh, and the driver is reporting that the steering is off and probably the camera as well. The team have the option to pull the car back to the pit lane for repairs, but for now, the TCR leader is left out on the track. Well, uh, we, we want to see and, and try to uh, see if we can wait for a code 60 before we pull him in. Uh, he's still got a, another 20, 30 minutes to go on his stint. Uh, so we're going to leave him out there and uh, hope for the best. No code 60s come to help them. So 10 minutes later, the car is called in. John Shen knows exactly what to do. I just try and focus. Avoid any incident, bring the car safe, no touch, nothing, uh, do the best lap time I can and uh, take care of the car and make sure it's passed on to the second driver, the next driver, in a good condition. That's all I can do. A perfect spin by the Ultran 308 Peugeot, but there's no lights on that car. Olivier Barron heading for the pit lane to get it fixed. More drivers having problems keeping the car pointing in the right direction. And as darkness has now fallen, all the cars need illumination, but not from flames. Uh, unfortunately, we had um, what appears to have been an exhaust fire, um, which rendered some of the components, in particular the electronic parts, uh, they, they, we couldn't carry on. So uh, disappointing for the drivers and, of course, for the team. Um, but like we've demonstrated in the past, we will regroup. Optum are capable of winning their class in this race in the past, so... Of course, in years to come, we'll come back stronger and uh, show that we're, we're still a good team at endurance racing. That is the true spirit of endurance racing. To get to the end of a 24-hour race without any technical issues is almost unheard of. Those who enjoy this type of racing always reflect on a good weekend with pride. We were leading the class for long periods. Um, the pit stops were, were faster than any other team. The drivers showed their consistency, so we knew we were on for a good result. And, Unfortunately, things like this in mud sport happen. Uh, the car is always prepared to the highest level by the team. Um, it's, we've found that it was something out of the team's control that caused the fire. So this is motorsport, and as I say, Optimum will come back better and stronger for previous uh, following years. Seven hours of the race are completed. Drivers getting ready now for their nighttime shifts. But let's take a look at the standings first. It's 9 o'clock in the evening, two SP3s and a TCR in the top three. The 129 LMS Seat holds the lead just by 24 seconds, though, over the 278 Janetta of CWS. The second CWS Janetta, the 178, one lap down in third. If we split out the SP3 class cars, it's the 278 and 178 of CWS first and second. And a third Janetta G55 in the top three. That's the Century Motorsport car, the number 229. In A2, Two English and one Danish teams are battling it out. The number 162 Renault Clio of Sicily Motorsport has a lap lead over the 171 Peugeot RCZ of Johnson Consulting. Third, the second Sicily Renault, the 164. The FIA approved 24 hour endurance series powered by Hankook is known in the motorsport world for delivering great racing with a fabulous atmosphere in the paddock. 
but not at the expense of safety. It was one of the first major series to adopt Code 60. And this year, an extra person is allowed to assist during driver change. That's the person wearing the green vest. I'm wearing the green vest because I'm in charge of uh, driver assist, which is a new role in 24-hour series. I am allowed uh, not to work on the car, but I may assist the driver stepping in and out of the car. That's correct. That was new uh, since this season. That was the first time we are using the green tablet. That's the person who can help the driver to get in and out of the car. So how does this improve the safety? I don't know if you have sat in this kind of cars. Sometimes it's that tight that they really need some help to get in or and out of the car. For drivers it's pretty hard to see because they are wearing a closed helmet uh, to see whether they fit the seat belts on properly. Uh, and we as crew, we can see it ourselves much better than the drivers do. So uh, it's a good choice of preventing to change this rule. King of the night at the moment, Willem Meyer, who is leading the race. Um, I brought the back uh, of the car back in uh, uh, pit lane on first place. Yeah, we had a long stint, we had a good strategy. We had a uh, Dura Code 60, we can uh, fuel the, refuel the car. And yeah, that's why yeah, we had a long stint, so we keep the car on P1. Vincent Rademacher battling technical issues in the 888 Audi. Uh, gearbox problem, so bearings for probably. And uh, yeah, some noise from the gearbox, some uh, temperature was rising from the gearbox and yeah, that, that, that's it, that's it. And changing the gearbox, uh, it's two long walks. So it's a shame because the, the weekend starts so well. But uh, yeah, it's racing, it's motorsport and especially 24 hours, yeah. It's not that the mechanics can't repair the gearbox, it all comes down to the budget, especially with the car already down the standings. It's not professional team, you know, it's uh, the money, is, you have to calculate everything. And uh, on the budget, it will be a big, uh, big issue on the budget. So I think it's a, it was the right, right decision to pull out the car, yeah. Simon Murray drove here last weekend in the Hankook 3x3 hour prototype endurance race, but he still has to get used to driving at night. I gave uh, most of the practice to the other guys, so uh, it was quite a steep learning curve getting in the car. Um, that night shift was like nothing I've ever felt before. There were just cars everywhere and lights and overtaking and being overtaken. It was quite something. With their extra pace, the GT cars are quick to pass but even they get hindered by a massive cloud of smoke. I think we're about 30 minutes into the stint and on the back straight after turn nine, shifted into fourth gear and the engine just went kaboom. So uh, yeah, massive vibration, lots of smoke. Um, and that was that engine dead. So I uh, radioed to the boys and said, is that the end of our race? And they said, no, we're gonna put a new engine in. An examination of the broken engine reveals what really happened. So I think uh, one of the pistons has failed and then that piston failing has eventually forced the conrod out the side of the engine, so there's a big hole in the block, um, and the conrod was out in the, uh, in the side of the engine bay, so yeah, it, it failed in a big way. The mechanics will make sure the car gets back on track. The drivers want that too, of course, because competing in Dubai in a mixed field is what racing is all about. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it, it, it's pretty hectic out there in that night session with so many GT3 cars, and they're... Um, they're absolutely fearless when they overtake you, so they properly dive bomb you into the corners. So you have to have your wits about you, um, and it's very, very difficult, but, um, but still enjoyable. So it'd be nice to get back out there. Just after the end of the Code 60, a collision between the 278 Ginetta, who was competing for the overall lead, remember, and the Renault Clio 164 brings out another purple flag. Um, it was after the Code 60, one of the Clios, but obviously he got cold rear tyres, and lost the rear end and I was the next car behind him and I had nowhere to go so just hit him pretty hard. Um, in, after the code 60 um, I spoon a little bit because I don't know if uh, maybe of cold tires or maybe there was something um, on the track I don't know and uh, the car goes slightly um, by side and then a bigger car hits me from behind so bad luck. Both cars are seriously damaged question is can they return I'm not an engineer but um, I have the feeling it is possible to bring the car back on the road so yeah hopefully it will be done by the guys in the pits more high-tech engineering
like a Porsche, uh, can be too, more, too much power and hit us in the right front. So we spun and uh, it was only uh, damage at the chassis, so no mechanical problems, only uh, with tape. We can fix all with tape. So does this alter the team tactics? Uh, our, our goal is that we can drive the whole 24 hours without uh, big damage, without a big crash. Uh, we had so, some touches, and uh, but yeah, we, we want to drive in the morning and then we have to look what, what happens. Baz Kooten Racing is running two cars. The car is doing very well. We are uh, currently uh, leading TCR class and uh, the TCE championship here in Dubai uh, with the Seat Leon number 129. So it uh, couldn't be better. And uh, the Audi had a turbo issue uh, which we had to change. It took almost an hour and a half. So uh, we dropped down in the order, but uh, the Seat Leon, Seat Leon is going so strong. As the race progresses, there are plenty of happy teams and drivers. It's a lot happening on the track, really. Uh, a lot of overtakings, uh, some incidents, so you really need to be focused all the time. But a uh, great atmosphere, it was, uh, was huge fun. Uh, one battle that was pretty interesting was a car with more horsepower. So uh, he always overtook me back on the straight and I had to battle back in the corner, so it was uh, quite interesting, yeah. Hard work by CWS on the 278 car. Not long before that car will be back in the race. Uh, the boys are doing a really good job. It's unbelievable what they've done and get back out. There's still a long way to go, so if we can get on the podium still potentially. So the whole front end basically been replaced. Thankfully, there's not any chassis damage, so it's been a lot of work for the boys for sure. Only half of the race is completed. Still a lot of action to come in the Hankook 24 hours of Dubai. It's two o'clock in the night, that means we're halfway now in the TCE series. I think it's very exciting in the TCUC series. In the beginning, we had some cars from the SP3 class in the top. They had some bad luck, and now at the top, there are some cars from the TCR class. That means that we still have a lot of excitement to come. The Mantai Racing Porsche number 12 is leading the race in the GT series, and here's how it stands in the Touring Car Endurance series. The number 129 LMS Racing by Baz Kooten still holds on to the overall lead. That means they're in line for vital points in the Championship of the Continent too. Nick Molly Team Engsler is second, the 57 of Lap 57 Motorsport in third. All those three leaders are TCR class cars, both in TCR, the Audi 115 from Bonk Motorsport, the Red Camel Jordan.NL 303 Seat is fifth, Stanko and Tanner's 212 is sixth. All of the top SP3s have had to deal with issues. It's taken them out of the overall top 10. The class standing shows the 178 CWS Janetta has a four lap lead over the 238 La Mera Cup car in second, with the sister CWS Janetta in third. This is endurance. Exactly, this is endurance. This is endurance, yes. <laughs> this is endurance, yeah. That's how it is. This is endurance, yeah. <laughs> this is endurance. Uh, this is endurance at the end of the day, so to get to the finish will be a task itself. To make life easier for the global competitors here in Dubai, organisers Creventic make the transport arrangements whether that's from the team's native country or for those who came directly from Austin, Texas, where the last race of last year's 24-hour series was held. As the teams arrived earlier in the week, all they had to do was open their containers and build their pit boxes. Well, the car came here, it's still running. Uh, we had issues in, uh, in Texas, in Kota, with the gearbox. Uh, luckily, we saw this problem. We prepared the car for the 24 hours and... Uh, we qualify fifth in class, which is um, okay for us, but it, it, it's all important to be uh, there after uh, 23 hours and uh, hopefully we'll get the finish. And for the drivers, it's even easier. Well, when we arrived, the, the team had already been here for a couple of days, so everything was unboxed, the car was ready to go, so we just um, arrived, had a cup of tea, got ourselves ready and jumped in the car. So that's the, that's the thing with being a, with a great team like Century Motorsport, everything was ready to go, so nice and easy for us. Not totally true. Before racing on track, all drivers have to present themselves, along with their equipment, to make sure it satisfies all the safety rules. 
Court Oyser was one of the teams whose container came straight from the USA after the quarter event, but they hadn't replaced everything they used in America, and that's an issue now. Uh, we uh, broke a wheel bearing uh, on the first four hours. Uh, this was a problem because we thought we had spare bearings with us, but we uh, lent to, to another team in Kota two months ago, and uh, we basically forgot to replace it. For most teams, that would make it impossible to continue. But not when your name is Kurt Oyser. This is racing, this is endurance racing. Never give up. We uh, were on Facebook here in Dubai uh, and we found some locals who are willing to help us. And um, we get a lot of reactions on everything, but sometimes the people don't understand what type of bearings you need. But I think we find the right guy now who is taking his own car apart to bring the wheel bearings here so we can continue. The crews wait for their cars and just after halfway, there's ample opportunity for them to show creativity on car repairs. A code 60 required, a collision in the GT series causing it. The pit lane is jam packed with cars taking the opportunity for a driver change, new tires and some fuel. And it looks like the Stanco and Tanner number 112 Seat needs its pit crew as well. We, we have uh, loose um, fluid water uh, and then we re repair this and uh, uh, we have uh, only 45 minutes then drive and was everything okay. The 50 metre board at turn 14 disappeared earlier in the race. Thomas Gannon in the 99 Honda Civic, a bit eager on his outlap, destroys the 100 metre board too. He continued without the need of his mechanics. Unlike Colin Boyle, whose 55 Seat has to come in on the end of a tour up. The real this is endurance mindset is demonstrated by the Court Oyser team. They did find the wheel bearings locally, and after nearly seven hours in the garage, they're ready to get back out on track. Rudolf Rhein has driven his first stint in the night. I drove just in the night. Uh, I think with my pace, I was very good. I drove uh, about the third fast lap. And uh, for my first night race and 24 hour race, I'm pretty happy with that. Dubai is very nice, it's my first, uh, uh, fourth time. I drive three times with the Clio and uh, my first time with the Audi in this uh, very nice in the good organization for the 24 hour three. Ralph Hengler spins the 112 Seat on his outlap. The 129 has a firm hold on the lead until a miscalculation. Yeah, it started really well, but at the end we are uh, running out of fuel. So yeah, I was stuck on the track without fuel and uh, with, the, uh, with the car before he can throw us back to the, to the pit lane. But yeah, uh, it was a shame, but we are now on P2 and fighting for P1. An uncharacteristic miscalculation from the Baz Kooten team. Yeah, it was a mistake of me, so uh, I didn't make the right uh, decision to come back early in the pit lane. I come back later in the pit lane. That was the strategy, and yeah, it was a mistake. 15 hours of racing completed. Out of 91 cars that started, only nine retirements, and just four of them were from the Touring Car Endurance Series. So it's still a packed track, but bad news for the Court Eyes number 71, back into the race just a little while ago, now on the end of a tour up. Yes, I uh, was my first lap in the stint and was the drive shift was broken. was very interesting. The, the car is not gone and why? Uh, what is the problem? Uh, we have a reset and now, okay, the show is broken and I wait for the services and we come in the box. Fewer problems with this repair as the team did have a drive shaft in stock. Half an hour later, Klaus back on track, enjoying his race. When the car is running, it's nice to drive, it's softly to drive, and I have denied uh, wonderful stints in the night, in the dark. It's easy to drive the car. I have much fun in the night. I love it, Dubai. I love it, Creventic. Laurent Piquet stalled in the La Mera Cup number 238, right at the most beautiful moment of the race, which they called the golden hour. And here in Dubai, it's truly worthy of that name. Rainer Partle running third overall in the Bonk 115. This is the car that added a few drivers after the 127 car was withdrawn after a crash during practice. 
quite clear that this TCE car is more than a match for some of the GTs. In the GT series, the number three Mercedes AMG GT4 is leading their race. In the Touring Car Endurance Series, Lap 57 Motorsports have just entered the top three. But after 18 hours of racing, local driver Nadia Zahur has had to park up the 57 Audi. But for now, it'll still feature in the standings. The Liquid Molly team Engstler Volkswagen Golf has the lead now. Former leader LMS Racing is a lap behind with the 129 Seat. And the aforementioned lap 57 Audi is just about to lose third place. Fifth overall, the Hoffer Bonk collaboration and their 131 BMW. That means they lead Cup 1 class for the M235i Racing Cup cars. Second in class, 11 laps down, the QSR number 154. One lap further back in third, Zorg Rennsport with the 151. The year two class lead is still in the hands of Sicily Motorsport with their Renault Clio 162. The sister car 164 is in third. Between them in second place, the Janssen 171, Peugeot RCZ. There's a huge variety of cars on track, but one thing they all have in common is a dedicated team ready to service the car. We have uh, two cars in our pit and it's really busy, so uh, every 20 minutes uh, the car comes. Uh, another got in, then we had a lot of problems. It's a really hard way, so the, the team had uh, no, uh, yeah, not enough rest time. <laughs> they enjoyed that, they need that. <laughs> yeah, they're unbelievably well drilled. It's really, really impressive. They've been working on both cars at the same time, which is pretty amazing. Um, we've been in obviously fixing, and when the other one came in, a couple of the boys jumped on the other car at the same time. It helps to have good fortune too. This perhaps a lucky number. Uh, yeah, I drove in the in the past in the Triple Eight team in the BTCC uh, Championship. So, and uh, yeah, normally it's a lucky number, but uh, it's not my choice. It's the, the team choice. <laughs> but the main thing you need is pride in the car you have. Well, the BMW I'm racing uh, for many many years. BMW, I won lot lots of races and championships with this car, with this type of car, and uh, I think it's a fantastic endurance car. We can really can do well even to the modern cars. The car is uh, about 10 years old, but uh, it's made for this type of racing and uh, we still can beat uh, the newcomers. SP3 class leader has just had a pit stop. It may look like they're taking things slowly, but it's much more the case that they're doing things correctly. And with a 17 lap lead over second, there's no need to hurry. In daylight now, but any crew member will take sleep whenever and wherever they can get it. Eric Dane in the 237 Lamara Cup entry has lost a left rear wheel. You can see it in the back of the picture. A Code 60 is called to recover the vehicle. Another advantage of Code 60 clearly illustrated here, as with the cars moving slowly, a marshal is able to go onto the track to remove debris. Plenty of action still out on the track. And the mechanics in the pits have worked hard all night to keep the cars running, regardless of what issues have befallen them. None have worked harder than the Stanko and Tanner crew to get their gremlins sorted. The car not out on track anymore. The car working now, then we not drive more with this car. We are in the TTR category, we are two, two behind to drive in the, in, the four, in the first in the class and it's uh, finished for this race. But hopefully we haven't seen the last of the team. We look now for the next uh, race and uh, maybe we drive in the 24 hours three <laughs> with the Audi and the Seat with two cars. They're not the only teams with problems. The 229, the 227 and the 303 needing to go to the pits. These three teams have had a troubled race. The mini sandstorm which blows across the main straight is just one of the things that makes racing in Dubai unique. Competitors love to race in Dubai and Dubai loves the races coming here. Always a pleasure. This is the 13th version of this race and uh, as always it's been a great success. Um, I think the atmosphere, you can see it, it's beautiful. Everyone is enjoying their time, they're having a blast. So are we, we're really excited to host this race every year. Heading towards the last three hours for some teams, less about making positions and more about taking care of the car and holding on to what they have, whilst others do want to push that little bit harder to try and make the podium. Stanko and Tanner have announced the retirement of the 112 car. 
And now the 212 sister car is heading to the pit lane at a very slow pace. Unfortunately, after the stop, uh, the turbocharger had the damage and so we had to retire from the race. They are working to change it now, but the race is over for us. Just like their sister car, they'll be back racing later in the year. Uh, we will see maybe the whole season, maybe one or two races. Uh, for sure, I will drive um, Barcelona. Or I won't drive Barcelona. And, uh... Engine problems means a retirement for the 303 Seat. So let's see how these problems affect the overall standings. Liquid Molly team Engsler holds a two lap lead after 21 hours of racing. The Volkswagen Golf number 130 staying ahead of the 129 Seat of LMS Racing. The Bonk Motorsport Audi 115, third position, but with laps to make up. That top three all running in TCR class, where other contenders include the lap 57 Audi, six laps further back. Ultran with their 908 and 308 Peugeot just a lap apart. And in seventh, the 216 Seat from Modena. No real change in SP3. The Ginetta of CWS, the 178 leading. The Mera Cup, 238 second. And the second CWS Ginetta, 278 in third. This is endurance. Oh, waking up this morning after racing all day yesterday and realizing we still got to run all the way till two o'clock. 24 hour races, just something unbelievable. I've never done one before. It's an incredible experience. Anyone that likes endurance racing has got to do a 24 hour. The 24 hour GT Endurance Series couldn't exist without sponsors. Partners like Hankook are essential to the organization of a series like this. But it's not just about the title sponsor. Jordans.nl have been supporting the Creventic organized series from the very beginning. Uh, Jordan Sign and Promotion is already for 12 years exclusive supplier for the 24 hour racing uh, for the uh, Hankook or uh, the Creventic uh, races. We produce uh, all the banners before the race. But uh, to, to fix it, uh, we must do it on the race, on the track, uh, on the paddock, um, around the, 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 the secretary room. The partner decals are prepared in advance and sent to the teams, but quite often teams need new ones. When the teams are putting uh, the, the, the stickers on the, on the car and uh, it's damaged, it's uh, not going well, then they come to me here on the, on the race and they ask me for new numbers and we make immediately new numbers uh, because uh, they come uh, not uh, through the scrutineering without number. It's very important. There's always been a sticker shop at the circuit to supply the new decals and this year they've expanded their service to supply the teams too. We started this year to uh, produce uh, on the circuit here, uh, and that's very important for the teams. Uh, they missed sponsor logos, and we can, we can produce uh, the sponsor logos in full color here on the circuit, and that's a very uh, new product for, uh, for us. It's the run to the checkered flag, and the lap 57 Audi is pushing to make up the six laps it needs to get back on the podium positions. With just three hours to go, though, the team knows they can only accomplish that if someone else in the top three has a technical problem. As we check the retirements, one car didn't start the race. Five cars have bowed out of competition already, but the rest of the 31 entries still fighting on the circuit. Anthony Lambert is rejoining in the 125 Audi, which has been in the garage for the last half hour. The car was in because it didn't cool enough anymore. The water temperature was 120 degrees and the reason behind that is that the radiator was uh, so damaged because of all the sand and dust and rubber, um, it didn't have any cooling capacity anymore, so we needed to replace it. This is so typical Dubai with 90 cars. Uh, in these conditions, you would not see this in Barcelona or Silverstone, but this is typically Dubai, unfortunately. Earlier on, the team had already spent quite a lot of time in the pit lane. And with the TCR class heavily contended, they now needed to change the radiator. This is just bad 
luck that is happening uh, two or three hours before the finish. Uh, we would have wanted to see the finish flag without any troubles, but uh, trouble hit us. The second pass Kooten entry, the 129 by LMS Racing, is upholding team honour, their second overall. Under two hours of racing to go, regulations demand a stint time of a maximum of two hours, so that means drivers getting in now will probably have the honour to take it to the chequered flag. The guys have very kindly let me uh, take the last stint. Um, I'm extremely grateful and uh, just hoping to bring the car home for the class win safely. The privilege of finishing has been given to Jean-Marc Lippmann, although his race hasn't gone as well as he'd expected. Yeah, I, I think we had a bit of a lemon this time. Um, just a lot of problems from day one, really. And you just set you back and set you back. A few gearbox issues, changed uh, three times now and set us back on Thursday, so a bad start position. Um, it was a challenge. We thought we, at least we're going with car was running fine. Let's go for a good finish. Maybe we can get top five, and then just multiple problems keep piling on and heating, uh, cooling problems, and more gearbox, more engine problems. And it's a challenge. If it, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And there's only a limited few people that can do it. And uh, in that in itself is great. The event's great. I've enjoyed myself. I've had some really good racing. I'm really happy with my performance, technically and also on track. And it's looking like we're going to finish. So that would be good. Last year we didn't in the Porsche. So this year the Audi, uh, it'd be nice to finish. No rest for the pit crews. Still cars that need attention, including the 71 BMW. They've been dealing with their issues in a true endurance racing spirit. Core Oise in the pit box again. Uh, we, we just run out of brake pad, pads in the rear, which we did not expect it, but uh, you know, we have uh, the pedal to the metal, we say, but we have, yeah, we have no more brakes, so we have to change brake pads in the rear. You know, I think it's uh, overheating or something, but uh, we cannot gain anything, but we will finish the race like this. Despite seven hours in the garage overnight, they will still complete 60% of their class leader. That means they're still eligible for championship points, all down to the hard-working mechanics. The overall victory goes to Jean-Carl Vernier, who's guiding the Volkswagen Golf GTI TCR towards the finish line for Liquimoli Team Engsler. After 24 hard-fought hours, it's the number 130 that wins the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series race in the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai. The victory despite the car having problems with the gearbox. We had the problem with the fourth gear and we couldn't use it. So as soon as we were on the straight, we were like doing third, fourth, fifth as up. And uh, we were losing a bit of performance, but uh, and the car was just great. and It was enough to win. This is the most important. And the same goes for the 129 Seat. Yeah, it was a heavy one. The engine was overheating every lap, so I need to slow down and the tires were overheating. So yeah, I just brought back of uh, the car back home, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy with the results. P2, so yeah. And um, was a hard stand about uh, two hours, um, so we had to to fight with the car in the last um, yeah, three four hours with the temperature of the water. But uh, yeah, we finish, and uh, that's it. The most important thing is just how much the drivers have enjoyed the race. Really challenging. I, mean, I was an LMP1 driver, I made Le Mans, I made pretty, quite a lot of racing in endurance. But here, may, be doing the race in, in the TCR, you have to take care about the GT3, take care about the, the slowest car. It's really challenging and I really liked it because I mean, you, you need to anticipate everything. So it was really cool, I really enjoyed the, my first stint by night. It was really, uh, really uh, awesome. The Hankook Dubai 24 hours has a great tradition of bringing the top three to the podium on camels. No exception for 2018. Because the GT series has been joined by the TCE series, more camels were required. In the GT series, three different manufacturers in the top three, with Mercedes-Benz AMG GT number two of Black Falcon taking the victory, the number 12 Porsche from Manti Racing in second, and the number 964 Lamborghini of GRT Grasso Racing in third. Now let's have a look at the final standings in the TCE series. Winning the first leg of the Touring Car Endurance Series Championship of the Continents, the 130 Volkswagen Golf GTI from Liquimoli Team Engsler. Two laps back in second, the Seat 129 LMS Racing by Baz Coote 
10 laps further back in third, the Bonk Motorsport 115 Audi RS3. The TCR Series class results is identical to the overall, with the Liquid Molly team taking the victory. In SP3, a race of attrition sees the CWS 178 Ginetta taking the win from the Lamera Cup car, the 238 in second, and the CWS 278 Ginetta make it a 1-3 for Colin White. In Cup 1 class, a win for the Hoffa Racing 131 thanks to their collaboration with Bonk Motorsport, Zorg Rensport 151 in second, QSR 154 in third. In A2, Sicily takes home the win with their Renault Clio number 162, second the Janssen 171 Peugeot and third another Sicily Clio the 164. The end of the 24 hours signalled by the podium ceremony, the 2018 racing season has just started. Our own next race will be in England in the legendary circuit of Silverstone in the second weekend of March. We have the 24 hours of Silverstone for the TCE series and we have also the 12 hours of Silverstone for the GT and Proto series. And we will return to the Emirates in January 2019 for the 14th Hanke 24 hours of Dubai. When you are Belgium and you have a full December with no sun, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's, it's good to come here uh, in the beginning of the year to take some sun. The track is beautiful, really nice track, and um, and the competition is uh, rising every year because yeah, when I started nine years ago, it was less competition than now, and and every year it's more professional and more professional. So it's a good it's a good race now. I think that friendly atmosphere, everyone gets access to all areas, and the track is quite technical. Um, uh, another advantage that this race has, or a challenge, is that I think you spend more than 12 hours in the dark, which is, uh, which is very challenging for the drivers. I think that is what bring the, brings them back. It will be nice if you will be there as a spectator, or even better, as a team or driver. It's been a successful first ever combined race for the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series and the 24-hour GT Endurance Series. Here we've been focusing on the TCE Series, but look out for our companion program that looks at the GT 24-hour race here in Dubai. The next race in the Championship of the Continents will be the 6th to the 8th of July in Portimao. The first round of the European Series is the 24 hours at Silverstone. For more information, go to www.24htcecseries.com. Come.